everybody. Welcome back to the country of Axia, which is suffering through a big crisis. Okay, so we're starting the second round. Oh, by the way, one thing I forgot. Uh, when I used my power plant, of course, I consumed these minerals, and Jen consumed this power, uh, but we still keep our labor, our workforce, who are ready to produce again. So Jen still got power, so she knows this round she's going to be able to run her resort again. I'm not going to be able to run my power plant again unless I get some more minerals. But it's interesting. Generate, generating too much power can actually be a problem because power is the only commodity in the game that we cannot sell and convert into money or victory points. So I don't want to overproduce power. I mean, if, if I just run this power plant one more time, I might have enough power for the rest of the game. Who knows? Although, again, all other industries or almost all other industries to provide power. And currently, Jen's still having to buy her power um, to run her stuff. But we'll see how well it goes. And certainly, I'm in a bit of a pickle here. I'm down to eight bucks. Am I going to be able to... Uh, well, we'll see how... But anyway, I am still the first player. That's the important thing. What am I going to do? <sighs> you know what? This is kind of crazy. But I think I'm going to do it. I'm going to invest in another finance person. I already have one I can't use, and I'm getting another one. And, I'm, and you're thinking, what? Is that crazy? There's two things I'm thinking. One, there is a bank. If I can invest in this failing bank, uh, it has spots for two financial people. So I could get it fired up with this new plus oneer that I'm using, and then I could apply my plus two and double the amount of money this bank makes. Now here's an interesting thing, by the way. Um, when you're deploying a worker, their plus one, plus two, plus three, whatever plus they've got, only applies if they are bonus workers. If they are the core worker, then it doesn't matter. So you want to use the lowest value workers to run the place, and then use your higher value people to get the bonus points. So that's the thing. I am thinking I want to snag this bank. Because I'm so low on cash, I'll be able to make a ton of money and I'll be able to run it with the power from my power plant to run this bank and I'll generate cash. And you know what? Money at the end of the game is worth points. Every, I think it's uh, five for one. The other reason I'm thinking this too is remember, Jen would very much like to get a finance person to improve the books on her resort and make her more money in points. So benefits are going first. I snagged that. It's kind of a, 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 an aggressive move because it's not like I have to go after the bank. And now if Jen wants to, she could see why I did it. She could go on ahead and snag this bank. And then boom, I'll have two finance people I'm not using. But here's the problem. Jen, if she comes here to the bank, she needs a finance person to run it. She doesn't have one. If she goes here and then my next move is to come over here to the foreign market, there's only one chance to hire. And so Jen will get a, make an investment in an industry she cannot actually run. So I don't think, I think what Jen's going to do is, in fact, actually, that was, yeah, Jen is actually going to come over here. This is her first move and get some foreign labor because it's cheaper because the economy is free falling. And so she'll be able to get the, the finance person she wants. And now it's my turn again. And you better believe I'm going to grab this bank. And if I hadn't, then Jen would have come here and she would have grabbed it. Now, once she was certain she had it, but I'm going to come over here. So the bank is mine. I've locked it in place. I'm not producing anything. I'm just going to produce money, uh, but I've got the power to run it. And I've got two people. Heck, if I can get, ah, uh, but there's no um, construction people, um, you know, because I can't come here to the foreign market to get construction. And the temp worker is offline because of the brain drain. So I can't get him either. So I won't be able to have full production on my bank, but still it'll be okay. So now where else am I going? Well, now here's the thing. I'm going to need 10 bucks to get this bank, which is going to get me three victory points, which isn't quite enough to get me up to 26. But the problem is I only have eight bucks. Um, so I need some cash. There's two ways I can make money. I can come up here and get four bucks to get some government subsidies. And that's enough. That will get me the, because then I'll have 12, which means I'll have the 10 that I need. Or instead, only one, any, any other players can come for government subsidies. Only one player can come over here and get a loan. That would be 10 bucks which would keep me going for quite a while, but I would immediately lose a victory point by um, you know, going out of, out of Axia for money, and I would have to continue losing victory points until I pay this loan off. I don't think I want that. Four is all I need, I think. Unless, if I get this 10, that means I have 18, there's 10. No, I still wouldn't have enough to like, make two investments, so I'm just going to get government subsidies. That's my next move. Uh, Jen's turn. Her second move. Oops, but wait a minute. No, I haven't done that yet. I was just thinking about what I was going to do next. It's Jen's second move. Right. So she's got the finance person, so the resort's going to produce better. 
she should probably invest some more. I mean, ideally, you want to be investing at least once every round. Because, I mean, it's a great way to convert money into victory points. Um, although it's basically the same as at the end of the game. Look, you know, five bucks for one point, 15 bucks for three points, 10 bucks for two points. Um, but some of them are better. 10 bucks for three points on this bank. I'm a very savvy businessman. Uh, this heavy entry isn't bad. 20 bucks to score five points. That's a bit better. That's four to one instead of five to one. Interestingly, Jen could afford the 20 bucks because she made so much money running her industry last turn. But then she'd need minerals and power to generate um, the steel. But if she could generate it, she could sell it, and that's the second best thing she contract she could fulfill. And that's pretty cool. But but she'll only have this chance and the next chance, and then heck, maybe there won't be any more steel contracts for a while. Jen can see there's a lot of mineral contracts coming. Maybe she should invest in a mine. She's got two to choose from. This one that produces two mineral versus one. Um, hmm, man. Either way, she's going to need uh, construction. There's no more construction to hire. But heck, she's, she's got an extra construction. So she could put this guy. All, although she gets this heavy industry, there, there's this really, really good level three engineer. So maybe she wants to grab that and then afterwards grab the heavy industry to put this. Although, but no, but that's the problem. You don't want to put a really great engineer to work just running the place. You want to have an extra engineer so that this great engineer pumps it up to higher heights. Hmm. Ma, 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 ma. But you know what? I mean, she gets this and she gets both of these engineers. Then she'd be she'd be producing a whole lot of, of this steel, but she wouldn't have any workers to actually sell the stuff, and she still wouldn't have the crystals she needs. The minerals! Why do I keep calling them crystals? Ah, tough choices. Well, I, th I think, yeah. Well, I mean, but she could just invest in this stuff now, knowing that in the third round, I mean, she could just do another round of just running her resort, you know, being very happy with that. She's still got power for it. And she could make a long-term investment to run the heavy industry in the third round. But she will have missed this opportunity to sell up to three steel, and it'll be this one for two. And I mean, there's still potentially going to be more opportunities to sell steel over the course of the game. And even if she can't sell it to the foreign market and make victory points, she can sell it for double its value to the black market and make money anyway. Does she want to do that? Well, here's another consideration to bear in mind also. I haven't mentioned it, but you'll notice some of the industries you can invest in have these little manager icons. This, by the way, this icon kind of gives you an idea of what the actual workers are going to look like. They, these little business people with attache cases and fedoras. So, mm, the thing is, Jen's resort doesn't, get, doesn't have any of those icons. Once somebody has collected three of those icons, they get a fifth worker. And that's a huge deal. Me, I've already got one for my power plant. I'm going to get two more. So at the end of this round, I'm going to have my fifth worker. Jen would like to, I mean, maybe she should invest in this heavy industry because that'll get her a worker. If she invests in these mines or these farms or a second resort, she's going to be stuck at only four. But you know what? It's kind of attractive, the notion of just investing in this resort and just running more resorts. And Jen can just focus on that like a laser. What the heck? That's what Jen's going to do. Uh, she's just going to continue catering to rich people from all around the world um, and make victory points. And she's not going to make anything tangible that she can sell. She's just going to um, appease the rich. All right. So she went for that, which means now she's already got a worker to run her first resort. She's got a worker to run her second resort. She'd like to get another worker or no, but she's going to get this financial person who will be able to work in either of her resorts. So that's okay. That's pretty cool. All right. So that was Jen's second move. Now it's my third move. And let's see, I've got the power I need. I've got, all right, I've got everything I need for this. If I could, I'd get another laborer to make my bank more profitable, but I can't. So I need to focus elsewhere. Let's see. Oh, you know what? I, I'm going to get some more minerals so I can run my power plant again. Need that. Oh, wait a minute. Will I be able to do that? Because how much money do I need? I need, let's see, I'm at eight. I need 10. So I need two more bucks. Plus to get more um, minerals would cost four. So that means I need six bucks. Which means I won't. Uh, the government subsidy won't be enough to do everything. But that's okay. I guess it means I'm going to take a loan next. Although, here's the problem. Jen could take the loan and then 
If she does the math, I'm going to do this and I'm going to hope she doesn't go for a loan because she certainly doesn't need a loan. She's got plenty of cash. But if Jen pays attention to what I'm doing and she figures out what I'm doing, she could just come over here, get the loan, pay it off immediately. She'll lose a victory point. Um, but she can prevent me from having enough money to do everything I need to do. And if I can't do everything I need to do, I start taking these penalty chips that will hurt me at the end of the game. Never mind the fact that I will have wasted precious actions. Oh, wow. So this is a bit of a gamble, me coming here, because then Jen could block me big time. But on the flip side, I could go and get my, my uh, what do you call it, my loan first, but then Jen could very easily come here, and then boom, I don't get to run my power plant. In which case, I didn't need the loan. Ah! Okay. So, yeah, yeah, I mean, this game can be e uh, uh, an incredibly aggressive cutthroat worker placement game uh, if players are really paying attention because there's, you know, in some ways there's a wealth of opportunities, a wealth of people, but there's some really tight pinch points. I'm going to take a chance though. I'm going to assume Jen's not going to do that because she already has enough money. She's not going to do that. Although, I mean, she already blocked me once by taking the resort that I obviously needed. Will she do it? Will she do it? No, she won't do it. Um, that would be really rough. That would be super... I mean, she'd be losing one victory point to make me waste an entire action, and I would also lose one victory point. But she's not going to do it. That's, that just ain't her style, folks. What is she going to do instead? Right, so she's investing in this. She needs more labor or construction. There is no more construction to be had on the market. That's kind of a bummer. Um, let's see, she needs 10 bucks. She could invest in something else. She's got 10 bucks. Right, right, so she's got 25. She's going to make more money off of running her resort again. Maybe she should invest in something else. She's spending, spending 10. So she could afford this mine or this farm, which would generate three food or one mineral. One mineral is not a lot, but it's one by default. If you pump it up with better workers, it can be producing more. I think Jen's going to invest twice. She's going to invest in this mine as well, um, which means she's going to make a lot more points to hopefully hit the target, because if she hits the target, she'll get a bonus as well. Um, and I'm like, oh, 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 I made it, I made it, I made it. And she says, yeah, I know, it's cool. All right, so Jen's got one more action now. Does she have enough? She needs 10, 10. She's got the money. All right, so she's going to make those investments. She's, oh, wait a minute. Yeah, she's got 23. She's got 25, so she can afford everything she's paying for. What else is she going to do? Oh. Wow. Hmm. You know what? I think Jen, she could go on ahead and get, take a victory point and grab first place for me so she gets first dibs. But instead, Jen's going to come up here and she's going to get one of these shady dealing opportunities that might help her in the future. We'll see how that goes. Okay, so we have once again deployed all our workers. We now start doing them. Jen gets her shady dealings. And these aren't called shady cards. These are opportunity cards. But you can get them through shady dealings. You can get them through initiative by taking a first player. And you can get them from the government directly by hitting your targets. Anyway, so what is opportunity has Jen gotten for herself? <gasps> Cheap energy. Um, now, Jen can play this anytime she wants up to, but not including, step 13. Gain one victory point. So she gets a victory point. So she just got a victory point. Yay. Plus buy up to five energy without losing victory points. Um, which is pretty... Tiku. All righty. So, what the heck? Jen's just... Nope, she's not. Hmm. Well, she might. Because that's the one thing. She only has one energy. She'd like to run both her resorts, but she needs another energy. All right. Okay, cool, cool. We'll get to that in a second. All right. So anyway, so Jen's got this. I don't know what it is. And there are some nasty cards in here. They're like, Jen can call for a strike that makes my workers go on strike. So I can't do what I thought I was going to do. Most of these are just like good things that help you out in various ways. Like, hey, get energy on the cheap. Um, but some of them are actually kind of mean too. So anyway, so Jen's got that. That was her first worker. And then coming down here, I am going to take a loan. Hooray, I go from 8 to 18, but I do lose one point by going to external investors. And I am now, on, this is what these are. I now, until I pay this off, and I can pay this off anytime. Once I have 10 bucks, I can just pay whenever I want and get rid of this loan. You can have up to four loans. Um, but every round, I'm going to lose another victory point. Heck, I could be losing four victory points if I take four loans. Um, but one is enough. I'm not going to go crazy. And so then we move over here, and yay, I just made the money. So I am going to buy... Um, the minerals, which cost four, but no victory points. So I'm now back down four. One, two, three, four. And so I've got that to run my power plant again. And let's see here. So then Jen, right, so she's going to hire her person. Hold on a second. Actually, I want to look one thing up. Um, 
Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, so, yep, Jen's going to pay three bucks because we're in the yellow. One, two, three. And she could hire any type of person. They all have plus one. Jen's going to get this finance person that I denied her by going first. So she's got that. That's going to make her resort even more profitable. Then I am going to get this uh, local finance person for free. And so all these people, well, they go home hungry. Nobody hired them. Then we come over investing. Jen is going to pay 10 and 10. So that's 20 bucks. She's down to two. But she just got a mine, a mine, and a second resort. Okay. Let's move our workers over here. Two resorts and a mine. And that is a total of one, two, three, four points. You got one, two, three, four. Right. Okay. And let's see, and just she's thinking ahead, she's going to put this other resort to work and she's going to. No, she's not because she doesn't have any food. So she's. Ah. Mmm. Oh, I miscalculated on Jen's behalf. Because she. Even though she's got, well, she's got these great investments, but she can't run them because she doesn't have energy or food, even though she's got the workers to run them. But that's okay. She made some points off them. She'll run them in the future. Anyway, so meanwhile, I invested in a failing bank. I bailed them out. That cost me 10. So I'm down to four. And that got me three points. One, two, three. All righty. Hooray. And it's going to be uh, run very smartly by all of these people. Okay. So that was that. And now nobody imported, which is good because we would lose victory points. Nobody generated power, which Jen, um, if she had, she could have run this mine in addition to her resort. Uh, now we start generating stuff. Okay, so I put most of my people, and I'm going to run two separate businesses. You can do them in any order you want. But one thing that's important to remember, if you have one business that like, generates food and then another business that consumes food, you can't use the food you generated. You, um, they all work at the same time. So it's not like this one can produce stuff that will feed into another one. You can't do combo strings like that. But you can generate stuff that in one round that you'll use in a subsequent round. But anyway, that doesn't matter in my case. This guy is going to burn through these minerals to generate four more power. One, two, three, four. And so now I've got enough power to last me for quite a while. Remember, I can only hold up to 12. All right. And so that's that. And then I'm going to run, use some power from last turn to run this bank. And uh, so it's two times five plus two. So it's actually four times five. So I just made 20 bucks. So I'm back up to 24. I'm in the money, folks. I got a lot of what it takes to get around. All right. So I'm good at making power and money, but I'm not actually making any goods yet to sell to foreign markets to actually help our economy. Ah. Anyway, so that's what I did. Jen, meanwhile, even though she's got all these great investments, she, if for just for one cube, she could run this mine. But as it is, she's just going to put everybody into this resort. Or hold on a second. She could, instead of running resort number one, she could run resort number two. No, she can't because she doesn't have food. So she can only run resort number one. So she's going to run it. And um, she's got two. So she makes four points. Two plus one plus one. She has made four. One, two, three, four. And Jen went over the projection, over the target. And she gets two, three, four times five is 20. Jen just made 20 bucks. She's back up to 22. So this resort is definitely paying off. Big time. Okay, so we both produced, and now once again, neither of us sold to the foreign market. So there are three more opportunities lost forever. So that was it for the second round. Now, once again, at the end of the round, we have to evaluate how well we've done. Jen, she is a superstar. She has gone above and beyond two more. So the economy actually climbs. It almost makes it back into the green. But then there is, um, well, I'm not quite the financial hero Jen is. Um, 26. One, two, three, four, five. I am five below the target. One, two, three, four, five. We're still in the thick of it, folks. Also, since Jen hit the target, Jen gets another. Oh, shoot, 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 shoot. I forgot. Jen did have a plan. Jen did have a plan. She had the cheap energy. She could have played this at any time, spent a little bit of money, and bought energy, which means she could have run her mine this turn, which means she would have been generating minerals that she could ultimately sell. Let's see, she's got another thing now, which is, oh, she got her cheap energy, and she's got smart banking. Uh, take a loan of 10 credits, adjust the loan track accordingly. So Jen can take a loan anytime she wants without having to waste an action like I did. So she needs more cash to be able to make a lot of investments. So that's pretty cool, too. All righty. So anyway, so Jen produced, and she could have, but it's fine. I mean, if, she'd spread, if she had spent the energy here, then the, the resort would have made one less point. She still would have been in the positive, and five less bucks. And she, so she basically made five more one more point, one more buck, rather than one crystal. 
I'm just going to keep calling them crystals. I can't call them minerals. I don't know why. They look like crystals. And this is kind of a quasi-sci-fi future thingy. So they make crystals instead of minerals. Anyway, so that was that. Um, we've evaluated. Jen got a big bonus. We're now moving on to round three where our target is now 34. And I am proving to be a very big drag on the economy. I really need to turn that around. Let's see. So this heavy industry, this mine, this farm, they all collapse. And now we get the last stuff. The last level ones, because we're going into round four, we'll start doing level two industries. Oh, here's where all the farms have been. Oh my gosh, wow. And trains and a power plant. Okay. And let's see here. By the way, for Eagle Eye folks, this is mislabeled in my prototype. This is actually a level one industry, not a level three industry. So we can make the trains run on time, which is a great way to make money. Here's another power plant, and there's a whole bunch of farms generating six food, two food, one food. This one needs chemicals because it's a, it's a big, heavy agriculture one. Uh, whereas this little tiny one, this must be organic free range because it doesn't need anything except for workers. Uh, it doesn't even need power, but it only generates one food because it's all organic. All right. Uh, meanwhile, the uh, brain drain is over, so we get access to our wild card worker again. And uh, nobody hired these people. I can't believe nobody hired that engineer. That's crazy. Some new ones are going to come. And they're removed from the game. They're out. Some new ones come out. And let's see. So we've got a level two engineer, another level three engineer. These are all two-sided, by the way. So they are men or women. Your choice. Okay. A couple of construction folks. And another finance person. Okay. And we're on to round three. Oh, but one last thing. Because I got my bank and my thing, I have my fifth worker now. I'm deploying five managers because of what I've invested in. I'm really behind on points, but I'm big on infrastructure. I can run anything. Um, and I've got more workers in Jen, but she's got more points than me. And this turn, it's definitely all about ensuring that she can run this other resort and this mine. She really wants to get this mine running. Oh, whoops, I forgot. These contracts have all come out and round three contracts are out. Ooh, more minerals. All right, Jen really needs to get that mine up and running so that she can start fulfilling all these contracts before they disappear. So the, we're set up for round three, and I think Jen might skip on investing altogether just so she can get more labor so, and resources so she can run all three of her current investments. And me, what am I going to do? Well, I, these guys are sitting pretty. I mean, this one's generating the energy for that. I need to pick up more minerals. But that's the thing. I don't think I want to keep on generating more power because a sub, you know, a, Excess power at the end of the game does nothing for me. It doesn't score me points at all. So I think I might want to look someplace else for this engineer to go work because I've got enough power to last me for a while. He could w work help running these trains, as an example, um, which is a, a way to get, generate money. Um, actually, that's interesting. That's the only place my engineer could work is on the trains because none of these farms need engineers. The power plant doesn't need engineer. So I think I'm gonna eyeball investing, on, investing in this train so I can produce more money. And then I'm producing lots of money. I'm still not producing goods. But you know what, heck, I mean, next round, we're gonna start getting into the level two industries and there'll be a lot more interesting opportunities that come up. Uh, but in the meantime, also, we're starting the third round. So uh, we're still in the yellow. So we get another yellow event, which will be Worker union strike, no! Organized labor has had enough of salary cuts and job insecurity. Each employer, each player must set aside one employee They may not be used this round. Now actually, that's not so bad for me. I was already thinking I didn't have a job for this engineer, so fine, go on strike engineer. I, I, I have no place for you to work anyway. Go ahead and go on strike. This hurts Jen a little bit more. I think she'll go on ahead and have one of her construction people go on strike. So she, right, so that kind of hurts. That might prevent her from being able to fully run all of her industries. Don't they understand how important it is? Oh. Anyway, so that strike hits, and um, we are now ready to go. I've got my five workers. Jen's got her four, and uh, now I'm less interested in the trains because of these ingrate engineers who went on strike. Uh, um, what I want to do, definitely, is get another laborer so I can uh, get my bank up to full potential. So probably I want to go ahead and grab one of these guys really quick while the grabbing's good. Because I know Jen wants them too, and yes she does. So she grabs the other one because she needs them both in her mines and all, both of her resorts. So suddenly they're all gone, just like that. And now it's my turn again. And, let's see here. So I need to be thinking about what, what do I want to invest in. 
If I invest in those trains now, I can't actually run them. There are always, there are always tons of food contracts. Uh, actually, I must make the best bread in the universe because everybody seems to want it throughout the game. There's always tons of them. So maybe I should invest in a farm since my engineer decided to uh, phone it in. If I were to do that, uh-oh. And just like that, my overhead camera, I just heard it beep, it has run out of space. So, you know what folks? I think that's as good a place as any to stop. Um, there's still a lot of ways to go. We're not even halfway through the game. Things are getting tight for me. Jen's, uh, Jen wants to hit the next target. She's got a couple of aces up her sleeve. She can use whenever she wants. Me, well, I've got my own, I've got five workers. How will it continue to evolve? Well, you'll have to get the game and find out for yourself. You can hit the I again to go check out the Kickstarter link or uh, go to Final Thoughts in five, four, three, two, one.